Today we'll be visiting Xavier University, New Orleans. We'll talk to its president, Dr. Norman Francis, about the future of the institution, and we'll share with you some of what is on the minds of the students here. I'm Robin Hinton, Xavier University, New Orleans, today on Folks. Everybody says folks, just plain old folks. Everybody just people all over the world. Oh, folks to live, folks got to give, folks got to care, ooh, folks got to share. everyone and welcome once again to folks. Today we are visiting Xavier University in New Orleans. The university has many distinctive characteristics. Among them is its role as the only predominantly black Catholic affiliated university in the country. Yet the doors to this magnificent university are open to all qualified students. Xavier is also one of the few black colleges in the country to have a college of pharmacy. Now while we were here, we talked to Dr. Norman Francis, president of the university, about what makes Xavier an attractive institution of higher learning. We believe students can learn. And number two, we hold them to high expectations and we give them the backup uh, support they need to accomplish what they want. Uh, secondly, we've got uh, committed teachers, and I think that's the core of any institution. Uh, teachers that uh, spend the time and the effort at what they do, and they do it well. And, and thirdly, as, a, as an institution, and I say this administratively, I have the responsibility of uh, being in charge of the administrative side of this. Uh, administratively, we are supportive of the academic and the, the teaching side. Uh, we're not in front of it, we're really behind it. And I think uh, when you put that all together, uh, it makes for a quality education. In your recruitment efforts here at Xavier, what kind of student do you look for? We like to find in a student someone who one believes in him or herself, who has had a desire to learn, and who would like to be somebody. Uh, obviously, we'd like to have someone who has had some background in education in the sense that they have a foundation, that they have spent some time in courses uh, substantially in English, in math, in social sciences, in the humanities, uh, art, music, uh, that they have developed uh, the skill for disciplining themselves to study. Now that sounds uh, perhaps demanding, uh, maybe somewhat confusing, but it isn't. It's very simple and it's, uh, it's what we describe uh, in the world today as a work ethic. And the same thing is true in education. Uh, the young people who are and who do succeed at Xavier, those who come with a desire to learn and who are willing to work at it, uh, nothing comes cheap in life. And uh, we believe education is serious business. And the young people who come to us know that. And I think that helps a great deal because Again, when they come, they find teachers who expect a lot. Uh, and I want to, want to pause to make sure I'm understood. Uh, we don't look for just geniuses. We look for young people with potential, obviously. Uh, we have bright, bright youngsters here. But we have youngsters who haven't totally fulfilled what their potential could really be. But as long as they are uh, committed to want to learn and, and, and desire to, to be uh, somebody, uh, we can take it the rest of the way. Tell me this, how do you survive the competition from larger universities and colleges throughout the state? That's difficult. Uh, I think one of the uh, ways that we have survived is that uh, we're good. Uh, and I think people want to be associated with success, uh, and they want to be where uh, they believe that if they put in the time and the effort that at the end, the bottom line will be uh, quality, they'll be uh, able to, to make their life uh, meaningful. Uh, our alumni, of course, uh, happen as a, uh, a number of people in a group to be our best-selling point because uh, in the long run, 
it's not who is the president. Uh, it isn't how many books you have in the library, although that's very important. It isn't even the buildings that you have, although that's important. In the long run, it's what happens after you have finished four years at Xavier. And our alumni demonstrate quite clearly what that is. And uh, to this day, we still uh, get from each freshman, uh, why did you choose Xavier? And the answer still is 85 to 90 percent. A uh, good institution, committed to excellence, and uh, uh, we believe that if we come, we can be somebody. We hear a lot today about how financially strapped private colleges are. Tell us, how is Xavier managing? We're having difficult times, too. Uh, these are probably going to be the worst days for higher education in this country, but more particularly in Louisiana. That's true for us in the private sector. That's particularly true for those in the public sector. I guess for those of us in the private sector, that's going to be even more difficult. And, 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 and you take a Xavier, where we obviously uh, serve a constituency whose families are going to be hardest hit when unemployment uh, and unemployment takes place as, as, as each is taking place now. Uh, and it's going to be difficult for them to finance an education when the federal government has cut back in its programs for financial assistance. Eighty-five percent of our young people have uh, some form of financial aid. Uh, that's very difficult. Uh, we, it's always been a struggle for us. Uh, I'm an eternal optimist. Uh, I, I've said to people many times that every time we open our doors, it's a miracle. Uh, and and we open them not simply to survive, we open them and do a, a good job. But that's not easy. And the financial crunch is going to be extremely difficult. And, and my mission, mission basically has been, in these last few months, in particular the last year, is try to convince those who believe in education, and I'm talking about those who have money and who are in ways to support education, that it's the best investment you can make in a community. And you've got to invest in people. And I would hope that certainly this state, this nation, continues to invest in young people, continues to invest in the kinds of young people at Xavier. Our uh, student body is roughly 85 to 87 percent black. We're the only historically black Catholic institution in the United States. Uh, we have a very special and unique role. Uh, we think we, we serve it very well. But we know that the need that was uh, there when Xavier was found that is still here today. Uh, when we look at, which frightens me uh, even in my optimism, the number of young blacks who drop out of high school today in urban centers that's uh, reaching uh, 50 to 60 percent. Uh, in New Orleans Parish, it's easily that. And what is most striking is that a disproportionate number of those who drop out are black males, that the uh, current record of uh, female-headed households is about 60 to 65 uh, percent. A, a society cannot survive that way. We have to educate young people who want to stay in school, and a sizable portion of those ought to go on to higher education, and that's the role that we are, we are serving. So if anything happens to us or happens to higher education, the community suffers. So I'm trying to, to in a missionary kind of way, uh, promote the idea that we should invest in education because we're investing in people. And it is a struggle, uh, but we continue to fight the fight, and we hopefully uh, will continue to win that fight, but it's not going to be easy. What effect have cutbacks in financial assistance had on student enrollment here? It has had an impact already on us. Uh, and not sizably, uh, but we, we have noticed a, a drop in the last year. Uh, not of applicants, not of people who have accepted and the like. Uh, that continues to be very high. The number of people who want to attend, those whom we uh, can and do accept because they are uh, qualified, these numbers are high. But those who are able to show up and put the package together for financial assistant, assistance, uh, we've noted a drop in that. And we are concerned about whether or not that will continue to be. We know we're facing that in higher education in general, but the lack of financial aid has had an impact. And it's, again, the reason I, I keep trying to, to, to spread the word that you've got to invest in uh, the financial assistance to those who need it most and the young people we're serving need it most. Uh, uh, there is always the argument about uh, we need money for defense and I am strongly in favor of having a strong country with a defense but one of the best defenses we can have is in educated young people and I think we've got to balance that in the ways that I don't think we're doing as appropriately as we should right now. Xavier University has a rich heritage, and as Sister Rosemarie Kleinhaus tells us, it was founded in 1915 by Mother Catherine Drexel and the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. 
The congregation was founded to work with blacks and Indians in the United States, and Mother Catherine was invited in 1915 by the Archbishop of New Orleans to open a school of higher education for black Catholics. Uh, she came down and she started as a, with a high school, as uh, most black colleges did, and added a normal school in 1917. In 1925, a College of Arts and Sciences, and in 1927, the College of Pharmacy. 1932, she added a graduate school. And at that time, the number of students had risen to the, such a number that they had to split the two. And so the college moved to the present site, and the co high school went on as Xavier Prep down at, uh, on Magazine Street. Now, I'm not sure how many students there were at the time, but when this building was dedicated, the main building, Mother Catherine uh, is supposed to have said to one of the sisters, pray that God will send us at least 500 students to fill this building. And of course, now we have close to 2,000 students, and we're looking for buildings to put the students in and <laughs> not students to put in the buildings. Um, so that, that's how it started. It was uh, founded uh, for uh, blacks and uh, for Catholics, but it has never been exclusively Catholic, and right now approximately 50 percent of the students are, uh, are Catholic. What role does the order play in campus life now? Originally, the university was owned and operated by the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, and the Board of Trustees and what we call the General Council of the Congregation were the same group of people. Uh, there was a president, it was a sister for years, and she would report directly to the, uh, what we then called the Superior General of the Congregation. Uh, in 1968, it became apparent to the president of the congregation at that time, Mother David, that uh, for the university to flourish, and also in a spirit of, of, of black self-determination, uh, that it was not appropriate that the university would continue to be owned and operated by the sisters, though the sisters continued to have a commitment to it. And at that time, um, they began to investigate the possibility of uh, an independent board of trustees which owned and operated the university. It was also at that time that uh, the congregation asked Dr. Norman Francis to serve as president, and he became president in 1968. In 1970, the ownership of the university was turned over by the congregation to the Board of Trustees, and that is the way it is now. Now, there are about 2,000 students enrolled at Xavier University from diverse backgrounds, but they all have one thing in common, a serious commitment to education. Out of all the universities you could have chosen, why did you choose Xavier? Well, I participated in Xavier's Math Science Olympiad, and when I came here, I liked what I saw. It was a good school. The teacher seemed really energetic, and I knew that I wanted to major in some form of pre-med, and they have a good chemistry pre-med department, good record, so I chose Xavier. One of the main reasons I chose Xavier, I started out, out in pharmacy when I came in and switched to English, so I had heard about the pharmacy program and, and its competitive nature, and I thought I'd like to enjoy that. And also Mardi Gras, I heard about Mardi Gras, so I felt that for my college experience, I wanted to get involved in some cultural activities, and I knew New Orleans was full of that in terms of the Super Bowl. Since I've been here, I've had a chance to go to the World's Fair and, and uh, just things like that. Next year, for example, you're going to have the NCAA championship, so I wanted to mix my academics with uh, cultural activities. To be perfectly honest, I did choose a school in Illinois at first. I went uh, one year at Northern Illinois, and uh, it was a very large university, about 34,000 students, and that was just overwhelming for me. And uh, after my experiences at Northern, I thought it was important that I get away from home, being from Chicago, and that I be in a predominantly black environment for my education. I had gone to predominantly white high school, and then I had gone straight to Northern, which was predominantly white, and I wanted to change my experiences, and so I chose Xavier, basically Xavier over any other black university because it was Catholic. Well, the reason that I chose to come to Xavier University, first of all, I was recruited here to play basketball, and after attending, you know, visiting the campus and seeing the people here and finding out that this university had very high academic standings, I decided to make Xavier my choice, and I'm glad I did. Um, there are a lot of a lot of things that you can learn here. A lot of people from different places, you know, you get an opportunity to talk to and get a feel of their, their lifestyles and kind of, I guess you say, uh, combines things with, you know, 
where you've come from, and it's a lot of experiences that all come together, and that's, that's basically the reason why I chose to come here. What does it take for a student to achieve success at Xavier? Well, I feel it takes um, discipline, first of all, <clears throat> and a desire to learn and listen at the same time. The um, only way you can progress here at this university is to be able to listen to other people and take advice with a good heart. Uh, it, and you have to be able to sit down and reason to with a lot of problems that you have here. Uh, our university provides a lot for us, and then there are some things that we, we don't have here. However, when you just take your time and just weed things out and remember what, what your purpose be, for being here is, in the long run, you'll make out just fine. Perseverance and a high level of motivation. Uh, Xavier oftentimes allows things to for students to be very easy. They kind of give away stuff for you. Uh, but I think that the real key to being successful is that you yourself uh, have a high level of motivation and not rely on other people to motivate you, uh, that you persevere, uh, that you stay involved and observant of everything that goes on around you. Because uh, Xavier is not a whole lot different from other places in that uh, life can be hard sometimes. Xavier certainly can be hard sometimes. But uh, it's important that you just keep your perspective that a student keeps their perspective and a high level of motivation and participation in uh, activities, not only at Xavier, but in the city, uh, in the state. I think it takes the same thing for a student to achieve success anywhere. I believe a positive mental attitude uh, will affect your life anywhere you go, and it certainly has for me at Xavier. When, you, when you're able to see the good things and dwell on the good things as opposed to the positive things, you're able to take advantage of those and you see opportunities as opposed to barriers. And uh, that's been the case here at Xavier. Um, that as well as, as Karen said, you have to be motivated and, and directed. When you have goals, you have a reason for studying, that, that it makes things a lot easier. And if you find the particular major that you're interested in, so when you're interested and you have a reason for studying it, I think it's a good road to success. What is it that makes Xavier special? Special. Because it's a black university and because it's small, you get to know a lot of people very well. And there are a lot of people just like me here who had came from some, the same backgrounds, came for the same thing, were looking for the same thing. So you get to meet a lot of friends here, a lot of true friends, not friends just in passing because we have to work together and you're not looked at as um, <coughs> a minority here because we're the majority here so they look at you just by who you are and you're judged by what you do so the uniqueness and the specialness of Xavier is the small atmosphere the closeness of the teachers with the students you can contact teachers almost any time and find them anywhere and most of them are Xavier graduates so they've been here and they know it's, what it's about but I think the best thing about Xavier so far for me has been the, the good friends that I've met and the good people here. Definitely in my opinion, I, I really feel it's the people here. I honestly feel that. Um, if I had to do it all over again, or for an example, if I had children, I would gladly send my children here. I, I think it's the people and I've enjoyed it. I, I have no complaints whatsoever. Not only are the graduates of Xavier University very special, but so are the academic programs. Dr. Alfred Guillaume, Dean of Arts and Sciences, tells us why. What makes uh, Xavier so special and what programs that we have that are indeed unique? Uh, Xavier, as you know, has a very strong uh, natural science component. We have at Xavier uh, a history of producing minorities, uh, sending minorities into medical school. Uh, last year we were number one in the country in sending the uh, blacks to medical school. Uh, for the last four or five years we ranked either third or fourth. And so we were gratified to know that last year we had uh, uh, we placed first in the country. This year already we have 21, so we look forward to, uh, to being at least in the forefront of producing blacks into minority schools. We also have the College of Pharmacy, but in the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, in addition to the uh, strong pre-med program, the strong science program, we have our uh, music program, which has historically been one of the stronger uh, programs at Xavier. We at Xavier pride ourselves on the liberal arts, and the liberal arts have been an integral part of the learning at Xavier. Although we have uh, a strong component in the, uh, the sciences, those students take a heavy dose of courses in the 
liberal arts. They must take foreign language, they must take uh, English literature, world history. In fact, world literature, I must say, instead of English literature, because we emphasize the mostly international ethnicity of, of, of the world, and that's so important. Uh, they must take uh, mathematics, they must take uh, natural sciences, they must take arts and humanities, uh, they must also take uh, courses in economics and, and the social sciences. All of these courses collectively uh, produce what we feel uh, is an individual that will leave Xavier not only as an uh, uh, individual well-trained for his or her profession, but an individual who will be the shaker, the mover, the doer, the thinker and the creator uh, in the respective positions that they will hold in society, and that they will transfer those skills not only into the job, but into society. Those are the things that I think make Xavier unique and, uh, and make the kinds of programs that we offer uh, so unique here at Xavier. Now about the faculty, what kind of faculty does Xavier attract and retain? Uh, Xavier is very fortunate. Uh, we attract uh, what we consider to be uh, very strong faculty. Our faculty come from varied backgrounds. Uh, they get their degrees from the Ivy League institutions. They have their degrees from uh, Southern institutions, from Western and Western institutions. Uh, they come uh, very well prepared. Our faculty, for the most part, is a fairly young faculty. Uh, it is about 60% uh, white, 40% black. Uh, about 65% of, of our faculty have uh, P, uh, terminal degrees the PhD or EDD or some other terminal degree. Uh, our faculty is, uh, we are a Catholic institution, and our faculty does not necessarily attract uh, Catholic faculty. Uh, we have uh, faculty from, uh, who are Christian, faculty who are Jew, faculty who are Muslim uh, and Hindu. Uh, so we also have an international uh, faculty, and we're very proud of that. And that uh, reflects the kind of uh, exposure we also want to give our students that multi-international flavor. Art is very much alive and well on the campus of Xavier University as we found out from Dr. John Scott, head of Xavier University's art department. Well the art department has been here close to I guess 40 years. It was founded by uh, Numa Rusev and his brother. His brother was an architect and uh, he left Xavier and Numa Rusev stayed and it expanded over the years from just a teacher's college to a fine arts program. And uh, some of the people out of this program are people like Frank Hayden at Southern, Van Chambers at Southern Baton Rouge, Ted Jones, Tennessee State, and numerous other people that came out of the program. It was one of the few places where you could get uh, professional training in a very small environment, very personalized manner, in the same fashion as the, uh, the old Gill system. You know. And we're still trying to do the same thing same approach to teaching. It's uh, a place where we think the fundamentals are extremely important. It's not uh, trying to follow what's the latest thing out of New York, though you're supposed to be aware of that, but it is to try and give students uh, a strong, strong foundation and then let them decide what they're going to do with it and where they're going to go with it. That's basically what this department is about. Now you are a very well-known artist here in Louisiana. What impact has your affiliation with the university had on your career as an artist? Well, I think, to me, teaching and making art is the same creative process. I think from the, the tradition of black people from Africa to here, or any people that have, that have artists, part of being an artist means sharing. And I think it's extremely important as an artist to share with others. I think there are those people that will say, you know, those that can't teach and those that can don't, and I think that's a crock. I think those that are sincere share and those that aren't don't. So, you know, I think being at Xavier has, has really helped me grow as an artist because I have to stay fresh to keep my students fresh. Therefore, I have to work twice as hard to stay ahead of them. So I think it's, it's been a very positive impact. You know, if I would have any complaint about teaching, I would like to have more time to my studio for myself. But, you know, I make it happen. Okay, as an artist, what do you try to instill in your students? I think just a positive self-image. I prefer to, to, to try, well, I try very hard to teach by example and not by verbs. You know, words are, are nice, but examples are stronger. So I, I really want my students to believe in themselves. And the one word I want them to throw out of their vocabulary is can't. 
I don't think that word should exist because I think if the human spirit desires it strong enough, it's going to happen. So we try to teach them that it has nothing to do with how much money you have or how big a studio you have or whether some critics say you're great or not. It's that if you believe in it, you can do it. As I said earlier, a lot of us are familiar with your works. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the projects you are working on now? Well, for the past three years, I've been working on a, a kinetic form that came off of the idea of uh, the diddly bow. A brief description of that is the diddly bow was a one-string African instrument that came to this country through the Mississippi Delta, and in fact, Bo Diddley's name came from the diddly bow. It's simply the bow form with a line on it. And what I uh, discovered was that, for me anyway, it was a discovery, that any line between two points has all the uh, characteristics of wave physics, length, frequency, and amplitude. So I started working with this and just putting things on this line and started dealing with kinetics based on wave physics. And it, it ties together the, uh, the African tradition with contemporary technology. So I think in my own mind, it's a true Afro-American form. And in fact, I was just informed last week that I uh, have been granted a commission by the city of Boston to do a very large piece there based on the diddly bow. So basically, that's where I am right now. That's what I'm working on. Does that mean you're going to be leaving Xavier? No, the piece is going to be, in fact, it's, it's going to be an economic thing for the city because it's going to be fabricated in New Orleans by New Orleans fabricators and New Orleans artists, and we're going to transport it to Boston and install it. But next year, I'll be on leave from Xavier. I won't be teaching but I will be available for students to see what I'm doing. I will be working on campus, but I won't be teaching. Dr. John Scott, head of the art department at Xavier University. Now with me here now is a distinguished alumni of Xavier, Sonia Massigal. And Sonia, has the campus changed at all since you attended school here? Well, it hasn't been that long since I was here, but yes, things have changed. There are new programs, new buildings, and a lot of new faces. But I bet it was great to be back, though. It was wonderful to be back. Great. Well, that's our program for this week. Thanks for watching. Next week, folks, visit Grambling State University, and we hope you'll join us then. Until that time, make it a great week. Bye-bye. Folks is celebrating its fifth year on LPB. And to celebrate the occasion, we have had designed a five-year commemorative poster. Now, if you are interested in having one, write us and let us know. Send your inquiry to folks in care of Louisiana Public Broadcasting, 7860 and Selmo Lane, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70810. We'll be sure to get one off to you right away.